Ryan, so today is very, very important and crucial on a lot of levels. So a few of you, but probably not many of you, will be aware that next week I'm going to Trans Madeira with my twin brother Jono. Now, what is Trans Madeira? Jono has been before and he describes it as just the ultimate, like the absolute highlight mountain bike event of the entire calendar. It's in Madeira, which is a Portuguese island. It's got huge mountains, just epic coastlines, forests. It has everything. And the guys over there organize every year this enduro race where you race over multiple days, you sleep on the beach, you move, you ride, you climb, you ride down, you add all your descent times together and that produces the result of the most epic highlight enduro race ever. So my brother is a massive, massive fan. He's begged me for years to go with him and this year I'm going. But it's not just myself and him that are going, it's Ben also. So Ben, who you all know, he's coming along and this for Jono, as a downhill racer, Trans Madeira is perfect. He gets to race downhill. He's going to smoke me, but I'm going to attempt to do my best to destroy him back. Ben, however, has ridden very, very few hours on enduro bikes. He, he's, he's really good and really natural, but in terms of hours committed to the sport, Ben is a novice. He's going to drop in and add his time together, and it's like, it's full on for Ben. So I'm working today on his bike. He doesn't know that. His bike has been the same for a long time. It's the Marin Rift Zone 27.5. And I'm gonna upgrade it. I'm gonna put loads of parts on it to make it more suited to the terrain we're going to. And I'm gonna do the same to my bike. So I'm in my kitchen. And firstly, before we get started, I'm just gonna crack on and go through a few little bits, which I'm actually gonna take with me as well on a nutrition level. So bikes need altering. We need to enhance and upgrade our bikes to make them suited. But nutrition wise, again, you may be aware I work with bulk. Here's a big range of their stuff. So they deliver me loads and loads of stuff to try out and test. And growing up, nutrition for me was not on my radar at all. I didn't really have the bandwidth to think about what I was putting in my body when I was digging, riding, just doing it for the love of it. Now I'm like not getting older, but now I'm more kind of career driven and kind of focused on getting all the hours and every minute out of the day. That is such, such an asset and a tool to be aware of. So protein wise, I used to think that taking protein and putting that inside you just wants, it makes you juiced up massive. I was going to be like Hercules and I am absolutely enormous and biblically strong. But actually protein is pure whey protein, recovery shakes. This is what I'm going to talk about. So protein for me is the most important for recovery, not building muscle, not getting huge, but actually doing a massive day on the tools, on the bike, doing whatever. And then at the end, being able to just quickly take a shake down and then being ready to go the next day. My brother was the one that kind of told me, Matt, you should consider these things. Like he trains really, really hard. He said, it's not just like a gym competitive thing. It is something that an athlete, especially me doing it every day for a living, I should do. So I'm gonna take recovery shake with me for me and Ben, see if Jono wants some too. Um, this morning, I'm gonna make some protein pancakes, not because I have them every day, but I've been to the shop and get some, blue, get some blueberries. I know it's cliche, but I'm actually gonna have protein pancakes with blueberries. So this stuff is mega. You literally just throw it in a pan, it creates a pancake for you, and it's loaded with protein. So I'm gonna do that right now. Bit of olive oil. Oh, it's a dusty affair. Two scoops. One, two, two. And 100 ml of water. Leave that for a couple of minutes. It goes in the pan. It takes two minutes to cook. You're actually living the dream here. See how the flipping goes. Ah. Well, oh, good colour. Smells good. I'm going to make another one actually, anyway. Instead of using water, I'm going to use milk and see which is best, because it does say you can use either. Just try one with milk. Woohoo! Presentation wise, as Michelin star standard. One's water, one's milk. I think we all know the milk one is gonna taste better. While I'm wolfing that down, the other stuff I'm gonna take with me to Madeira is this, the all-in-one complete food shake. So 
Whenever I go traveling, half the game is finding food in the mornings. I always used to like spend ages trying to find like a cafe or a good breakfast place I like. And then by the time you fly home, you've kind of only done one morning there and it's usually the last one when you're hung over anyway. So this, bulk do a complete food shake. So I've got two of those shaker bottles. I'd take one for the recovery. And then sometimes if you've got a long day on the road riding flat out, like when I went to Dubby Bike Park with Blake, I took that stuff with me. You fill a shaker bottle with it and throughout the day you just consume it. You drink it and it's got all of the natural things, all of like the minerals, the vitamins, the proteins, the things you need that you actually get from food because it contains the stuff you get from food. Recovery shake for post ride, complete food shake for pre ride and I reckon I'm going to win. Hell yeah. Milk. Milk's way better. Mm. Use the milk. If you like pancakes, if you like nutrition, or if you just want to step up your game and discover a new side to sport that you haven't really considered, Bulk have just got the most endless range of products and the descriptions on there describe all the benefits that you can gain from those. And if you use the discount code MATT, just my name, M-A-T-T, -T, there's always savings available. Right now it's like 28% off on top of the payday sale that's already on. It's changing all the time, but I just went on there and it's a huge, huge saving right now. So use that and see what sort of uh, discount you get at checkout. So here's Ben's bike in the stand in my garage. Ben has ridden this bike 100% stock since it came out the box. He's the only one to ride this bike. He loves it, but Ben hasn't gone through that process of upgrading his bike before. And I know you guys who messaged me about kind of, I want to get some new bars, new stem, new pedals, what do you recommend? That's an exciting prospect, not knowing what's out there. You've got the whole range of products across the whole world and all the brands to choose from. And I'm gonna make some selections for Ben. So. He will love it. He doesn't know what it feels like to change your tires up for heavier duty ones to get more grip, more cornering ability. So I'm gonna change the tires. I'm gonna change lots of things on this bike, but firstly, I'm gonna put a P&W dropper post on it with that immense loam lever. This one's still got the stock setup on. I always run the P&W ones on my bike. How good's that gonna look? Oh, Ben, you lucky boy. You are gonna be using that dropper post more than you've ever imagined. I told Ben there's a lot of climbing involved in Madeira. It's, it's a mountain range, right? And you have to get to the top with pedal power only. That's the whole point of an enduro race. I don't think Ben's actually computed what that means for his body and his legs, but uh, this will help get to press your thumb on the kindest, most ergonomic, most fluffy, most pretty dropper post lever on the market, you should be thrilled. Right, so the dropper post is looking very good. She pops up. The wheels are out. I'm gonna swap the wheels for halo wheels. I've also found some race face carbon cranks, which is super, super light. This is gonna make Ben's bike lighter. They're very stiff cranks. But the most important enhancement I'm putting on, which accompanies the cranks, is an absolute black oval chain ring. Now the oval, is a technology which has been around for years in road bikes, in race BMXs, in mountain bikes in recent years. Ben obviously hasn't felt the requirement to run an oval. He probably doesn't even know that it might make it better for him in Madeira, but it is gonna make and absolutely transform the event for him because an oval is so, so, so crucial for climbing. It irons out those really peak spikes of power. If you plotted on a graph what your legs are doing to the cranks and the back wheel, it would just be spike, nothing, spike, nothing, spike, nothing. And that acts as effectively a cam so that what goes on at the back wheel, which is what drives you up the hill, this cam irons out those spikes and troughs and makes a very, very smooth power kind of application to the back wheel. Have I lost you? Have I still got you? When you're climbing, it gets rid of those dead spots, it helps with grip, and you actually can cruise up the hill easier. It makes your legs and the bike as a whole a more efficient machine. That's why Absolute Black sell these chain rings. That's why I'm putting one on Ben's bike, because he's going to struggle with the climbs. He might struggle just a tad less now. Jono obviously has one too. He's caught up. I've got one, so level playing field all round. I'll put these on now. I'll do the wheels. Wheels come with tyres, loads of other bits, bars, stem, and then we'll just check in with the full build because I think Ben's actually coming soon to film another video and I wouldn't mind getting this all wrapped up and hidden away and packed in a bike bag so that when we get to Madeira, it's good to go and it'll be chuffed. Right, that's job done then. So Ben, if you're watching this, you've already got your bike. You're probably in Madeira. I've upgraded it for you. It's fully upgraded. I need to start on mine, just sort of cleaning it up and packing it down. These are both going to go in bike bags, but here is Ben's very own enduro bike fit for Madeira. He's not fit for Madeira, but his bike, I'd say, definitely is. I've put on Halo Vortex wheels with a super drive hub, which just sounds incredible. Now, the big, big enhancement, which might seem on the surface like not the most crazy upgrade, but is just so effective for this style of riding, is tyres. 
I put on the Continental De Kaiser tyres, 27.5. They're 2.4 wide, and that has changed the look of the bike completely. It's a beefier tyre, and you can see here, they've got the sort of chamfer edge there, which is fast for rolling, but then that steep cut-off edge on the tyre here, when you're travelling in that direction, when you start braking, these hook up so, so, so well. Those tyres, honestly, as soon as I started running them on most of my bike, I just noticed such a difference braking late into turns, into corners and things like that. Carbon fibre cranks, the oval chain ring. There she is, in black. There's the dropper lever, there's the new dropper post, up she comes. Now, grips. These are the only Gusset S2 grips I found. They are not the colour that would naturally match this bike, but weirdly, and almost secretively, I like them a lot. They go with a few tiny, tiny, tiny bits on this bike. Like we've got a Makov tubeless valve there in the same colour. And then I've got titanium bolts down there in the same colour again. So, as far as bikes go, Ben, this has got to be your best ever bike, surely. For me, I'm stoked with it. I'm stoked I could use up some parts. I've taken loads of parts off the bike. I'll do a giveaway for everything that's come off of it. Oh, and Gussie S2 bars and stem. Check this out. She's got a way beefier bar, a 35mm wide bar, 33mm long stem. Now 33mm isn't the longest stem ever. Ben isn't very tall. You typically run like a 40 to 50mm stem on an enduro bike, but I think for Ben, reducing that reach on a bike that's actually still got a decent standover height is gonna be really important. The dropper has got 150mm of travel on the PW dropper, so that's good. I know again, he's not the tallest guy ever, but having a quite a decent range of drop size is gonna help it get absolutely slammed for the downhills and bring the saddle up to the height where you actually need it for seriously, seriously, like, kilometres of climbing every day. And there she is. I think the cassette could be bigger. I think that is going to be the limiting factor. It's, like, not an insane ratio cassette. On my... Let's look. Look at this cassette here, for example. Way bigger range between there and there. This one, not so much. So... I mean, Ben's got nothing to compare it to. It's very similar to the cassette that came off this bike. I've reduced the front chairing to a 30 tooth one to help with that. But climbing, he might want a bigger ring. So he maybe he'll have Jono and I pushing on his back. But uh, yeah, next video, we'll be out in Trans Madeira. I can't wait. It's going to be sick. I'll pack all these bikes down, get everything back together. And then it's race time. It's go time. I think we're going to be sleeping on a beach first night in a tent. So wish us all luck. I know it's a bit of a pointless video, maybe, but upgrading stuff and things like that, it'll all come to fruition when we're out there. So, see you in the next one, legends. Everything goes. Ah.